Can I have a hug? Oh, see, that's my girl right here. See? She ain't shot. This is the Lamar Woodley Show on Hoopla TV. I'm your host, Michelle Newell, and of course, this is Lamar Woodley. How you doing? Lamar, we're doing things a little different today because today we're celebrating your kickoff event for Sack Attack. We're here at the Estelle S. Campbell Boys and Girls Club. This is a great thing for you to have coming up off of the home opener. Yeah, this is my third year. It started back in 2009. I'm doing the Sack Attack. Um, I do it for um, three different causes. Um, that's PAC. Heroes for Kids and the Boys and Girls Club of Western Pennsylvania. Um, last year we had we raised probably 20, 30,000, and um, this year I'm looking to raise a little bit more. Okay, now we're going to talk a little bit more about Sack Attack in this show, so let's talk about football. Yesterday's game, congratulations on a great win. Defense was on point. I'm sure the Steelers fans were happy. It was, it was a good game. I mean, what we did was first we just went back and made the corrections out the Baltimore game because we knew that Seattle was going to go and look at that tape and try to run some of the same offense that Baltimore did the previous week. Uh, so we made the corrections in practice. And as you see, we went out there and we played together as a team, and there wasn't anybody pointing any fingers at anybody. That we didn't we didn't give commentators any yeah. any any fi any quiet. fire yeah. any fire at all. <laughs> yeah, you know, yesterday, so. yeah, it got real quick because a lot of people were saying that you guys were getting too old and you just didn't have it anymore. But yesterday, you definitely proved everybody wrong, and I thought that was crazy to even make those comments before the season, right. you know, we, we're not even fully into the season. Right. So this is the second game, and I'm sure you guys look at this as a victory, but at the same time, you're staying focused, I'm sure. Yeah, because you, hear, you always hear everybody saying, this team is getting old, this te or that team is getting old. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's always two things in this league. Either you're too young or you're too old. When can you be, always be just right, or they're just yeah. the right age? for football. There, there's never a just right. Either you're too young or you're too old. And they've been saying this team has been getting old ever since I was in college. And now that I'm here, they're saying this team is getting old. But every year, we seem to be that team in the Super Bowl. We seem to be that team that's always number one, definitely in defense, ranked at the top of the NFL each and every year. I guess that's just something old teams do. We had a little bit of a setback yesterday because Ben, obviously, he got, he got hit a little hard and his knee was suspect at first we didn't know what was happening is he okay now uh, ben ben is okay i seen him earlier today looking pretty good walking around pretty good um ben looked like he'll be back again um next sunday but if he ain't you know um another quarterback charlie batch you know you just have to rely on the guys that's yeah. there like i said this is called teamwork one one guy go down somebody else had to step in and play that role now i have a question though about ben's hit a lot of people thought it was questionable do you think it was a dirty hit I wouldn't say that it's a dirty hit, even though it was against my quarterback, mm -hmm. just because of the simple fact the guy was kind of, you know, he lost his balance a little bit and he was going down. So if you got a guy that's weighing 300 plus pounds, mm -hmm. you know, falling to the ground, it's kind of hard to avoid any guy, you know, definitely when all that weight is going forward. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't, I don't believe it's a dirty hit at all. Okay, next we have the Colts. Are you ready for that game? Oh, definitely <laughs> ready. You know, the, the Colts is a different team. They don't have um, Peyton Manning back there, um, but they're still the Indianapolis Colts. And they're, you know, they're on two right now, and they're looking to have a big game, just like we're looking to have a big game. It's a Sunday night game, it's an eight o'clock game. Everybody's gonna be watching. It's prime time. So when it's prime time, the Pittsburgh Steelers show up, and we definitely want to keep our winning streak going. So we have to go down there and make plays and play like we played this past Sunday. Okay. Well, we had a great event today with the Sack Attack, and we're going to talk a little bit more about the Sack Attack when we come back. This is the Lamar Whitley Show on Hoopla TV. Thank you, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. And a few autographs on that, huh? So there are a couple of kids that have some questions for you, Lamar, today. And what's your name? Gary. Gary, Gary what's your question for Lamar? Um, where'd you play? Uh, Little League football and how does it help you in your career? Uh, well, first I started off playing Little League football. Uh, I was probably in the sixth grade. Uh, they had a weight limit 
Um, I was about 160 pounds in the sixth grade, so I weighed too much, so I couldn't play. So I had to play uh, flag football. And then I actually first started playing, um, I was in seventh grade, I was 12 years old, and I played um, in Saginaw, Michigan, at a school called South Middle School. And it just helped me because it taught me, you know, teamwork at an early age, as far as, you know, hard work, because you just can't come out there and show up on game day. You have to go to practice each and every day and work hard and compete, and then you go out there and have, and have your joy on game day. What's your name? London. London, what's your question for Lamar? How old were you when you started to go to the Boys and Girls Club? Um, I was eight years old when I started going to the Boys and Girls Club. I uh, went every day from three to five, and one of my favorite games was playing bumper pool. We're here at Estelle S. Campbell Boys and Girls Club, and Lamar, today's event was a huge success. Tell us a little bit about what Sack Attack is. It was an excellent event. Mm -hmm. uh, we had the Rainbow Kids perform, um, the A-Team. Uh, we had a magic show. I mean, it was just unbelievable. I got up and I participated in the magic show. Because one thing about watching magic on TV, you're like, man, they got to be doing something. So I tried to watch the guy, and he got out the handcuffs and was doing things behind my back. He, he had your wallet, didn't he? Yeah, wallet? yeah. You know, I had to search. You know, he, he took my wallet. I mean, the, the guy was just unbelievable. I mean, it was, it was an amazing show today. And, you know, the, the kids really made this event, you know, what it was today. Because without them, without them showing their support, without them showing up, um, it's kind of hard to have a great event like this. I noticed that it's definitely all about the kids. Why is it so focused on kids? Uh, because when I was growing up, I went to the Boys and Girls Club when I was probably started when I was in the third grade. Um, and that's where I met most of my friends at that Boys and Girls Club. Because most of the people that was at the Boys and Girls Club where I was at was people who didn't really have much. You know, who's either at a single parent home or no parents at all at home. And, you know, that was just our, our chance to actually give away, get away and have some fun. And so I said, if I was any, you know, if I was successful in any kind of way, that I'll make sure that I come back to the Boys and Girls Club, and not only whether it's financial or just giving my time coming back, you know, showing the kids there is somebody positive who came through this program, and here I am standing in front of you today. And it was so good to see you up there with the kids, because I can tell that this sack attack thing is so important to you. You had so much passion. You were up there playing with the kids. You were smiling. You gave things away. Tell us a little bit about what sack attack is about. Uh, sack attack is about, I've, I've been doing it now for three years. Started back in 2009. It goes to three different organizations, um, PAC, Heroes for Kids, and Boys and Girls Club of Western Pennsylvania. Uh, so what it's based on is uh, every year I donate $6,500 to kick it off, and I have sponsors who donate $500 for every sack that I get. And uh, so the more sacks, uh, the more money we donate. Mm -hmm. And um, last year I think we raised twenty dollars to $25,000, and we split it up between um, the three different causes. So mm -hmm. um, sacks also helps on the field and off the field as well because the more sacks I get on the field, it helps with going towards that Super Bowl championship. Mm -hmm. And then also off the field, it helps go towards causes that I'm participating in. Lamar, you know, every body that wants to get into the NFL, they always have a dream of what they're <clears throat> going to do when they get all their money and what they're going to buy or whatever charitable cause that they're going to participate in. Is this something that you thought about before you joined the NFL? Did you have that in your mind, like, I want to help kids, I want to reach out to my community? Yeah, this is something I've been doing for, for a long time. You know, when, when I was in junior high, I used to always go back to my elementary school. When I got to high school, I always went back to elementary, junior high. College, same thing. I always went back and I visited the schools and I talked to the kids, letting them know, you know, because you're looking up to me. I was here, I was in the locker room, I played on this basketball court, I played out here on the football field. And now that I'm at a professional level, I have an opportunity now to go back and be a big name and a big face in my community, you know, showing kids this is where I came from. So sometimes you're getting people telling you that you will never be nothing in life. You, there's no way you can make it. I'm living proof. I've been there, done that. And, I, and I'm always there to tell the kids, I've been there. People told me the same thing. But here I am standing in front of you today letting you know I went through some of those same situations and I'm in the NFL.
So Lamar, this is a great event and it was really nice to be here at your Sack Attack event and you take a lot of pride in it. Do you see this getting really, really big a couple years from now? Like what's your ultimate goal for this Sack Attack? Well, you know, every year I hope that it get bigger and bigger. You know, but the key thing for Sack Attack to get bigger is for more sponsors to participate in it. Because the more sponsors that we have participating in it, the more money we're able to give. But also the more sacks that, you know, that I get each and every year, the more money we can give as well. Yeah. Um, but we need participants of, of the sponsors. And I'm, I'm looking to make this big, bigger and better every year. Every year from the first time we started has improved and, and went to a, a different level. Lamar, today's show was so great. We want to thank, first off, the Estelle S. Campbell Boys and Girls Club for letting us be here today. Did you have a good time? I had a great time. I wanted to get out there on the basketball court once again for the second week, <laughs> but I didn't bring my basketball shoes, so uh, couldn't do it. Once again, I know because you said that last time, so maybe next time we could actually see you on the court. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to dunk on nobody, hurt their feelings, you know. <laughs> I, got a, I do got some springs in these legs, but I don't want to dunk on nobody. Okay, we want to let you know about Lamar's Twitter page and his Facebook page. If you want to follow him on Twitter, follow him, or they can find you on Facebook, right? Yeah, you know, follow me on Twitter at, at Lamar Woodley, nickname on there, Feral Redwood. So um, that's definitely me on there. And, of course, you can contact me. You can find me on Twitter under Michelle Newell, or you can find me on Facebook under Michelle Newell. Again, this has been a great show, Lamar, and we just want to thank you out there for watching. This has been the Lamar Whitley Show on Hoopla TV. It's all good. You can chat all that you want. It's all good. You can talk all that you want. It's all good. What's your name? Isaiah. Isaiah, how old are you? 13. Okay, and what's your question for Lamar? What made you want to play football as you were younger? Uh, what made me want to play football as younger? I was, I was actually, I played three different sports. I played um, basketball, baseball, and, and football. Um, what made me stick to football was once I got to high school, I realized that I wasn't growing anymore. And I was going to be maybe 6'1", and I knew I couldn't be a basketball player. And the ball was coming too fast to play um, baseball. So I figured I'd just play a little bit of football where um, I can tackle people. So I stayed on the defense side of the ball because I didn't want to run the ball because I didn't want guys hitting me. Okay, Isaiah, do you have any more questions for Lamar? Just one more. Okay. What position did you play in college? Um, in college, um, I came in when I came from Saginaw High. I came in playing outside linebacker, but then I switched to defensive end. So I played defensive end in college, and once I got back here, I moved outside linebacker. What's your name? That's Ron. How old are you? 13. And what's your question for Lamar? How many sacks do you have in your career? Um, as of right now, I have a total of uh, 40 and a half sacks. Um, I just, this year alone, I have um, one and a half sacks. Including playoffs, you know, I got about big one and a half, though. I remember my days, you know, in the Boys and Girls Club. It was, it was great times. That's where I met a lot of my friends at. And building those kids probably faced some of the same things that I faced when I was younger. You know, people you know, not being positive or putting them down. So, you know, by me coming back, you know, giving them a chance to see that somebody who was in our shoes has, has been successful in life.